couple of arenas with fans in there. Are there enough in there that it really makes a difference? You can tell. And um, what was it like in Brooklyn when there were people who could actually like pass the ball back to the ref? They were that close. Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually it's great to have them, but you really don't hear hear them much. Uh, but I think with with coaching and playing, that it could be a, a a sellout, and a lot of times you're so locked in, very rarely do you hear it throughout the game. I mean, you might catch a few moments, but yesterday I I don't know if I I don't even know how many fans were in. It's pretty, I mean, it's a big arena. It's pretty spread out. I mean, but it's great to have fans. I mean, it's, even if it's only 2,000, it's better than nothing. Uh, I'm sure the players probably, you know, can hear it more than, than, than I can hear it. Uh, but it's, we'd love to have them all back. And hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get some fans uh, ourselves. And I know you can't really say much, but now that we're kind of hearing more and more, I guess a couple of NBA teams, have there been discussions with Danny and his teams about uh, anything with the vaccine for you guys? Yeah, I know there's definitely been discussions, but nothing as of yet. Uh, but we're all, we're all waiting uh, for that to happen. Uh, but until, until then, we're just, my stance is there's a, there's a lot of people right now that, that don't, that don't have it. Uh, I think that that's becoming less and less each day. Um, but there's a lot of people that probably need it more than you know myself. Uh, until that that all gets solved, I think you know. I, at least my stance is I'm I'm willing to take a back seat on it. But I, I think they're definitely in discussions. I mean, the the country we're doing so much better um, with it, and there's more supplies and more opportunities for for everybody to get it. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Penny. Hey, coach. Uh, I wanted to hear your opinion about uh, Denny's foul trouble. Uh, we saw him on multiple games uh, getting into foul trouble early. And we w I wanted to know what do you think about it, whether it's uh, inexperienced, um, um, the referees uh, like blowing the whistle, uh, freely because he's a rookie or just um, lack of uh, defensive uh, consistency? Um, I think it's a little bit of everything. I hate to be so, uh, but I, I think, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, I think he needs to, to understand that the, the experience is a very important and he's getting that there's, there's, I mean, we're, the referees are seeing how he plays and, and, and he's seeing how his opponent plays and how certain refs call certain things. Uh, you just have to, you have to go through the growing pains. Uh, I, I don't like the, the, the ticky tack fouls, uh, the touch fouls on the shot. Cause those are, those are fouls. There's no, like, you can't argue that. Well, I'm, I'm being physical and you know, both guys are being physical. No. The ticky tack fouls, like he had a bunch of them last night. You can't foul the shooters on the, in the, on the elbow, on the hand, on the arm. And those are the things that we're trying to eliminate. Those, that's going to be experience. Um, but but like, like I said many times, Denny, this is all good for Denny to go through this. I know sometimes it's, it's, it's hard and it's mentally a challenge, exhausting at times for him and myself. But it's important for him to go through this. And, and when he does get through it he's going to be a better player from it and but experience it's it's a game at a time and and he's getting it this is a this is a very difficult league these are the world's greatest players all uh in, in 30 teams so he's he gets to see a, a great player every night and it's definitely a challenge but like i said he just has to continue to work through it and do you think it's something that uh, we should expect to see less often, um, let's say in his uh, second or third year, uh, once the referees will get used to his type of defense, his, uh, the way that he guards, the physicality? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's been, even when I played, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and, and it's, you hear the same things, um, 20 years before I play from coach or players. And they hear it the same now. And 20 years from now, you're going to hear the same. The game slows down for you. 
year after year and it gets to a, a spot where you can see things and but right now the game is fast it's fast for every rookie not just Danny every rookie and it slows down each year and I think when the game does slow down do not put in these compromising positions where you're going to get some of the fouls that are called on them they're not picking on them there's no I mean I don't believe in that I think uh the, the referees they got they're prideful in their job they want to make the right call but they still have to be able to I mean he has to be able to understand how the game is being called here and I think I think he gets a, a little bit of a better handle on that and the game slows down, you're not going to see him get, you know, six fouls in whatever, 20 minutes. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, I, I just wanted to check in with you about Rui's jump shot, because I remember last year and even coming into this year, you guys all talked so much about him getting more arc on that jumper. And, and he's shooting a little bit of a percentage now, a better percentage now than he was last year. And, he, and he's taking more of them. Where do you think he's at fundamentally with his three ball? Are you guys still work reworking that? Is he at where you want him to be? No, I, I think he's still improving and still working on it. But it's getting, it's moving in the right direction. And I think it's also the mindset. When you're not comfortable shooting those shots and you've never done it in your life and now you're doing it and we want you to do it and you have to do it, it's a mindset. And when you miss a couple, you got to step up to the plate and make the next shot or take the next shot. And I, but I, I, I love what he's doing. He definitely needs to get better and he needs to just the, the decision making on whether it's a shot or it's a swing, swing pass. I thought he missed uh, two opportunities that he took, should have took the shot and then he missed two hour opportunities where he should have passed it to a better shot. Uh, those are all experience um, based and he's going to get that. But I like what he's doing. He works every day on it. And but it's definitely proofs over season over season. Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. After the last night's game against the Knicks, what uh, your team needs to improve? about the tomorrow's game and the rest of the season? Well, we got to, you know, we got to be consistent. We, since the break, we haven't been consistent on the defensive end. We haven't been consistent with the physicality. We haven't been, been consistent with our toughness. Uh, we do it, uh, but not every game. And we have to be able to do it. We got good guys that want to do it. They got to get that mindset that it's not, a, there's no nights off. There's no nights off. Uh, as soon as you relax, uh, your man's going to be able to attack you, and they're going to uh, you're going to make it easy on them. I thought last night we didn't we didn't show the physicality, and we have to be able to do that. Physical physical presence is important on every every good team, and we want to be a good team. We got to be able to do that consistently. It's not like it's not like our guys are going into the game not wanting to do it. But they gotta they gotta step into the challenge that you know what we have to do it every night and sometimes it's 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 force feeding, but we have to do it within and uh, we had a good film session today. Um, that was definitely a pretty uh, much the talking point. All right, coach. All right, that's guys. it for today. And the follow up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Christos. Okay, I have a follow up, coach. That, this is a traded line period. How how you try to handle locked in on basketball your players uh, or about all those speculations and rumors around? Say that. Say that again. I missed the first part. Yeah. How, uh, this is a traded line period, and how you try to handle your players locked in on basketball? Yeah, I mean that's part of the game. I mean they're. they're if they're going to be in this league for 10, 12 years, they're going to have 12 uh, trade deadline periods, and it's part of it. Uh, you got to play through it all. Uh, most of it is all just talk, people throwing stuff out there. Uh, very rarely does it ever happen. So your job is to um, you know, stay in the moment, play, play the game, um, each day for your team, and and you can't worry about that. I don't. I don't worry about it as a coach. I don't. I, don't, I didn't worry about it as a player. 
you just focus on playing. I mean, it's no fun. It's no fun to be, um, you know, talked about. And but it's also you got to look at the positive side that there's when you're all talked about, teams want you. I, I'm just curious. The trade deadline is tomorrow. You've been through many of them, uh, but you have a lot of very young teammates that have been through very few of them or, or none of them. And on a sub 500 team, it comes up at least in the public. Is that a is that a thing that you kind of impart wisdom on about with the young guys? Does it ever come up? Uh, not too often, honestly. I think uh, everybody's just focused on what they can control. Um, Today, example, that was getting work in, trying to improve, trying to get better. And and I have to ask, what inspired the headband? Oh, you know, um, you don't dissect things like that. Uh, it's just inspiration from from a bolt of lightning. Who knows? That's what I was going to guess. Thanks, <laughs> Robert. Chase. Um. Hey, Robin, um, as a veteran player, what's it like being on a team where you have young players in the rotation where they're sort of um, guys who are experienced, but you're also relying on players that aren't as experienced and at the same time trying to win games? Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely a teaching moment from a lot of the, for a lot of the vets. Um, I don't think we want, we never want any moral victories or anything of the kind. We're trying to win games. So I think the thing we're trying to establish most of all right now is just some sense of consistency, especially on the defensive end. Penny. Hey, Robin. Um, we saw a, an incident right before the end of the first quarter today, uh, yesterday, uh, when after a foul underneath the basket on Mitchell Robinson, uh, you pointed on Denny. Can you elaborate some more about this uh, incident? What happened there? Uh, I was just trying to figure out what was going. I think we were just trying to figure out what was going on with the foul call. What? What? Who? Who was the foul? Uh, who the the referees whistled? Yeah, we were we weren't sure about who the referees had called it on. Thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. Ava. Hey, Robin. Um, now that you guys have been into a, a couple of arenas where fans are allowed, just wanted to get your um, perspective on if you notice the crowds that are kind of coming back into arenas. And I know they're pretty scattered and small. Do they have they made a difference? I guess so far. It's exciting to have people back uh, within the parameters of safety. That said, I personally haven't noticed myself. I, I know we've all been very focused on what's going on on the floor. I think that's first and foremost on our minds. I don't know that there's enough, uh, enough patrons in the stands to have an impact on that focus quite as of yet. Um, did you notice when you guys had to stop to disinfect the ball in Brooklyn the other, the other day? I did, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. That, that when was, you picked up. <laughs> that was intriguing. <laughs> Intrig How do you mean intriguing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose just it's somewhat unusual. It doesn't happen a lot to uh, sanitize the ball like that. But we were also up twice as much as the as Brooklyn at that point, and they switched out the balls. I think the okay. score was four to two, but still twice as much. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Christos. Hello, Robin. Hope you are doing well. Your team is uh, four wins away from the play from the tenth place and the playing tournament. What do uh, you think your team needs to be in the to make a playoff push until the end of the season? We need to be a lot more consistent on the defensive end. That's the number one priority for us. Um, hey Russ. Uh, first of all, um, as a veteran player, what's it like being in a rotation where you also have uh, much younger and less experienced players um, as you guys try to win games, but also. Uh, have some guys in there who are, who have a learning curve. Uh, I mean, it's a learning process. You gotta try to figure it out along the way. Uh, but you don't got that much time to try to figure it out right now. And what are the conversations um, between you and other veteran players generally like during times like this, where you know you guys are are searching for a turnaround? Um, you just gotta figure out a way to get a win. That's simple. Christos. Hello, 
doing well. Uh, both uh, coach uh, Brooks and uh, Robin Lopez uh, mentioned the consistency and how you need to be consistent. What uh, your team needs to be consistent on both ends of the floor? I mean, just a mindset. It's a mentality you got to have. You can't really teach it or try to figure out, um, you know, solutions for it. It's got to be a, a mentality you have. And uh, how important for you is to bounce back after a tough night against uh, New York and to respond tomorrow? I don't know what you said. We'll come back to you, Christos. Uh, Ava? Russ, um, what's your approach after this kind of last stretch of games where it's clear from talking to you guys that it kind of everybody knows the problem. Um, how do you kind of approach that in the in the post game locker room? Like, oh. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's only a certain amount you can do. Uh, honestly, you got to be able to figure out uh, how you, know, you just get yourself ready to go. That's it. At some point, you got to take the personal challenge and figure it out. Thank you, Yannick. Hey, Russ, um, you're having an excellent month of March in terms of your stats um, after getting off to a start that wasn't up to your career standards. Um, what do you attribute to the, um, your excellent month and why was it difficult was to get my, off to the start of your career standards? What's my career standards? I mean, you average a triple double. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but what do you attribute to your turnaround of lately? No, no, I want to answer that question. What's my career standards? Well, mean? you averaged a triple double um, for okay, for a I'm season. Gonna, I'm there. Is that normal? I mean, uh, it's otherworldly. Is that really good? No, is, is that normal? For you, I mean, oh, no, I would no, no, say for me in general, is that normal? No, it's not normal. No. Exactly. So go ahead. Yeah. Your question. Your question? So it's just, um, what do you attribute to your turnaround from earlier this season with um, the numbers that you've been putting up lately? Nothing, man. I just want to win. That's it. Numbers, whatever. Um, you know, all that will come. Uh, the rhythm. Just, I wasn't healthy. I was hurt. So um, being healthy helps me move better. Score more. You know, I'm able to do it on the floor. So. And also one more question. What's the tone that you want to give to each team that you play for? Um, what, do you try, what did you want to try to bring to uh, this Wizards team when you uh, first arrived? Um, just my leadership and my experience. Chase, you have another? Uh, yeah, Russ, um, a few minutes ago, you mentioned sort of the time you guys have left to, to turn things around. Um, what would you kind of say about, you know, just the urgency given where you guys are in, in the season? Um, it has to be higher, I can tell you that. And, um, you know, you guys just played New York and you're going to play them again. Um, so as you go from one game to the other, what's the adjustment you think you guys need to make? Uh, you just got to play harder. That's it. You don't really, nothing else. You got to have some toughness and be ready to go. That's it. Neil. Russ, you're, you're talking about this consistency, this mentality. Is that something that you think players can learn along the way, or is that something that is mostly you either have it or you don't? You know, I'm not quite sure on that one, uh, to be honest. All right, we'll finish with Christos. Give you one more chance here. Russell, uh, I, you hear me now? It's okay. Okay, I would like to ask you how important for you is to bounce back after la last night's loss and uh, to be back on the winning road. Uh, it's very important. 